1984, Margaret Thatcher removed the state support for the coal mining industry, threatening the livelihoods of tens of thousands of mining families across the UK. This triggered one of the longest and most bitter strikes in recent memory. Anne Scargill and Betty Cook joined thousands of miners' wives who stepped outside the confines of their homes to organise support groups for striking miners. In our community, the main aim was start a sub kitchen. Yeah. They needed to be fed. We did need to really feed them and make sure that somewhere warm to go while they had at least one hot meal a day. Um, when we first started our soap kitchen, we just door knocked and asked for donations of food, anything just to, to provide a meal. So that was the prime thing. If you like, it was an extension of our domestic role at the time, uh, caring and feeding. But then uh, we escalated at a pace, didn't we? We really, we really got going. It was fish and chips on a Monday, and Gladys all the to fried chips. <laughs> Wednesday, it depending on how much money we got, we used to have a dessert on a Wednesday, uh, meat and tatey pie or cottage pie, butchers were very, very good to us, bakers used to bring us the bread, bakers union helped us, and here we were, we, in fact, in the really highlight, June, July of the strike, we were doing two sittings and you could sit 80 people down. So it were hard work. And a lot of these women, we had women, oh, I'll come, but I can't cook, but I can wash up. So you had a rota, yeah. Monday, Wednesday and Friday we were open. It were like a big family. And people come and help you, like somebody might not have any food. In the... So if somebody had got two tins, they took them a tin. And you've got this, like, big family together. And if somebody went to court, we'll come to court, will you? You, you, didn't, you didn't, they didn't have to ask. No. We were organised to go with them. We knew what was happening. So there, it brought a community together that had not been together like that probably since the war. And it was a war. And we were fighting it with men. He got women in, a, in our community going on streets of York, collecting and enjoying it. Oh, we've had a good day out there, you know, and coming back and look how much we've collected, which they'd have never done then if he tend to be in for strike. Men were getting arrested and they couldn't go back on picket lines. So at one of these meetings, somebody said, well, we'll have to go. They can't sack us. So we'll go on these picket lines. So we started now, and as I say, organised pickets. Mark Devitt, one of the union men, oh, he was really anti-women. But we didn't take the notice on him. Well, he knew what to do with her. Yeah, I know he was a union man, but obviously his wife didn't come, but he went out to do We didn't take the notice on him. We just did what I wanted. And then in end, about June, July, when old men, they couldn't go back on picket lines and they were sacking them that, they were glad for women to go. I mean, I can go in Barnsley and all over and a lot of them know me and Betty because we were always on picket lines, we'd turn up. And I mean, when police were saying to them, you can't do that, who can't do that? And if they arrested us, they couldn't sack us. So what? I mean, a policeman said we went to Notts one morning, Nottinghamshire, and a policeman said to me, how the hell you got here? He says, I'd rather have 200 men than 20 women. <laughs> he says, they went to us, they told. <laughs> I said, I can't believe that. <laughs> We, we used to go, we used to hire a minibus to go on picket lines, didn't we? And yeah. obviously there were roadblocks all over the place. And I always sat at the back. And if we got pulled, they used to say to me, "Cry," you know. But we, they used to say, "Where are you going?" And we were strippers. We'd got an engagement in London, or we'd been on a girls' night out to a nightclub. And then somebody had kicked me and they said, oh, you got to let us go. My husband and buddy killed me. I had to be home an hour before now. And please don't stop us. Please let us go. And then one one morning, we used to go, obviously, early hours. They gave us a minibus with a blue stripe down and they thought it were theirs. And we got <laughs> waved through every roadblock. It were absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. 
I couldn't envisage the women not getting involved. Because, you know, when we look back at 1926 strike, I didn't realise the extent that women have been involved in that strike. But I found a wonderful little book that ta talked about women that had gone abroad speaking to raise money in 1926. And hopefully our history will be chronicled and it will pass down generations. An inspiration to other women as well, to see what they can do. Because, as I say, at the end of the strike, if it had been up to the women, the men wouldn't have come back. Mm. They were more more determined, yeah? And obviously you can speak to men now, and they'll say, well, if you tend to be in for women, the strike wouldn't have lasted so long. And now to get that from a group of miners, and you see it turned a lot of women's lives around. I mean, we've got women uh, who probably wouldn't even have gone to work. They're working now, and one of them's a... Uh, they've got... Some's got a really good job, haven't they, Betty? Oh, yes. You know, from coming up from the ranks through, yeah? So, obviously, the women found that they could do... They've got talent and ability, and they could do things that they'd never even have probably got the chance to do, and they did them and they've used them to the best of their ability. I'll tell you a little story now. There were a lad in our, who used to come in our soup kitchens. He couldn't go picketing, so he did help us in the soup kitchens. And he says to me, he says, Anne, I want my wife back. He says, I don't want her, I've got now. I want one I had before. I says, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> and they did get divorced. He says, I don't want her, I've got now. I would say to women at work, join the union, become active in your union, become active in local politics, and look at the old motto that we used to have, Educa agitate, educate and organise. And organise within your workplace, within your home, within your community. Educate your children. I think that's one of the most important things that as women we can do to educate our future generations.